Hey, how's it going, fellow weeaboos? Hope your grind games are still going strong here in Gouda Gouda. Camaro Bros and Dragon Bro have been uh, treating me right. Demon Guy is still a bitch, though. So y'all have voted for Lead Die Shorty Feet Grill in the Twitter poll I made for you guys to vote on who the next video was going to be about. So, here she is. I think that a lot of you will be happy with this since I wasn't able to include Okta in my other video where I briefly covered all the five stars. So think of this as a kind of like a makeup video for not being able to slide Okta in there like how I'd like to slide into Okta's DMs if she added Twitter too. But as promised, let's take a look at Okta Soji who, just like Bushytail, always gets her goddamn name butchered by you uneducated weeaboo mongrels! Okta Soji is one of the many gender-swapped historical figures in Fate Grand Order who went from this to this. <laughs> <laughs> and she now presides as Caldea's resident foot fetish inducer. But her thighs aren't bad either. They should satisfy you until Shisho shows up in the gotcha soon. Sakura Saber's stats go as follows. She's got 13,225 HP and 12,068 attack at level 90 and 14,489 HP and 13,210 attack with full grails. This means that for 5 stars, her health is rather low, but her attack is very high, so it's more optimal to focus on boosting her attack as much as you can over her health under usual circumstances. Her growth curve is reverse S, and here some of you may be wondering, hey Toe Sniper, what does reverse S mean? Well, let me teach you, since it's obvious that you don't pay any frickin' attention in math class. This is what's known as a regular S growth curve. In FGO terms, that is. In mathematics, it's what's called a logarithmic growth curve. This means that, assuming that the x-axis indicates a servant's level and the y-axis indicates the servant's stats, a particular servant will gain the bulk of his or her stats during the earlier stages of his or her growth as you level them. This is why servants like, say, spineless whiny bitch and pointy stick uncle have basically almost the same stats at level 80 as they do at level 90. Now this is a reverse S growth curve. In math, it's what's called an exponential growth curve. This time, what this means for you is that, again, assuming that the x-axis indicates servant level and the y-axis indicates servant stats, yada yada yada, a servant will gain the bulk of his or her stats during the later stages of his or her growth as you level them, usually during the last 10 levels of their final ascension. To put this into a numerical perspective, at level 80, Okta has 11,272 HP and 10,302 attack. So if we were to assume that Okta's growth pattern was linear, which it isn't, but I'm going to assume that it is just so that it's easier for us to understand this, Okta gains about 142.68 HP and 130.41 attack going from level 1 to level 80. But going from level 80 to 90 on the other hand, she gains 195.3 HP and 176.6 attack per level. Again, just to reiterate, these are assuming the averages of her exponential growth patterns, but I think you get the point here, if your brain hasn't exploded already from hearing too many numbers being spoon-fed to you in a short period of time. So with this in mind, remember that if you do have Okta, but you're just kind of sitting on those gears that you got from the Gouda Gouda shop because you want to use them for other servants, just know that you're really denying Okta of her full power if you leave her only at level 80. Like I mentioned earlier, some servants you can afford to leave at level 80, like Spineless Whiny Bitch and Pointy Stick Uncle, because by that point, they've already just about hit their max potentials as far as levels go, but Okta is not one of them because of her reverse S growth curve. If you've already used up your gears, then, well, there's nothing really you can do about that. But in case you haven't, I strongly recommend going all the way with Feet Grill's Ascensions because she gets a huge chunk of her stats towards the end. And besides, don't you want to hear her go... Die, sorry! Her star absorption is 98, which, if you compare it to the star absorption ratings of all the other gold sabers in NAFGO at the moment, is the second lowest of them all, with only Siegfried's being lower. God damn it, Siegfried, why are you so fucking useless all the time? Her star gen is 10.2%, which is actually the highest among the gold sabers in NAFGO at the moment, though it's only 0.1% higher than her closest competitor, Nero, who has 10.1%. But what really makes that star gen stat shine is the fact that her quick card has has 5 hits, and all of you should know by now that the higher the hit count of an attack card, the more stars that it has the potential of producing, especially if it's a quick card. 
Thus, on average, expect Dai Shori Girl to produce anywhere from 5 to 8 stars per quick card, depending on how, when in the attack order you use it. And don't forget the fact that, with her NP, she can quick Brave Chain to really make it rain crit stars. Her MP charge gain is 1.09%, which is also the highest out of all the gold sabers in the game. Unfortunately, this is mitigated rather heavily by the fact that her command deck only has one arts card in it because she's got a 2Q, 2B deck. So Sakura Saber can't really take advantage of her high charge gain to the extent that maybe other sabers can. If you do get lucky enough to get Okita's arts card and two quick cards in a single hand, though she can easily gain at least 50% with that Brave Chain, but obviously since it relies on the chance of her getting all three of those cards together in a single hand, don't really expect that to happen every day, or every often for that matter, unless you're just having EX luck that particular day or something. Her defensive charge gain is 3%, and her death rate is 35%, but these are meaningless right now. Come back in a year or two, and maybe I'll talk about it. Super Suck Girl has skills that emphasize a crit roll for her. Let's talk about her first skill first, because, well, you know, it's like her first skill. So, yeah, let's... Talk about for that first, yeah. Reduced Earth B, or Shukuchi B, as the NAFGO version calls it, because the Aniplex translation team, all three of them, is all composed of weebs, provides a 30 to 50% increase in quick card performance for Okita and Okita alone. This is essentially Okita's version of Mana Burst, except it's meant for her quick cards, not her buster cards. Remember that it only lasts for one turn, though, just like Mana Burst, so make sure to only use it when you've at least got both of Okita's quick cards on deck, but obviously the most optimal time use it is when you've got her quick brave chain on deck instead. Her second skill is Weak Constitution A, which is a star pull skill that increases her pull weight by 500% to 1000% depending on level. Now at first glance, you might look at these numbers and think, who oh boy, 500% even at level 1, what's the point of even leveling this stupid fucking skill, right? Well, there is, actually. If you pay attention whenever you have Okta out on the field, if you use weak constitution when you have a limited number of stars, Okta will not always put all the stars to her own command cards entirely. Some of the stars might leak out and go to the other cards that aren't hers instead. So leveling weak constitution ensures that more of the stars go to Okta's cards and have less of a chance of leaking, so to speak to the other cards in the same deck. This skill is particularly important if you're running Okta with teammates who have stronger star pulls thanks to their classes. Archers and Riders are the ones to look out for here because those two are the ones with the highest pull weights. And if the skill isn't leveled highly enough, sometimes getting Okta the crit stars you want her to get can be a little tricky. And finally, her third skill is Eye of the Mind False A, her evade skill. It's the same as Herc's and the same as Orion's, but hers is A rank while Hercules is B rank and Orion is B minus, meaning that she's got the strongest version of this skill. The only one besides her who has this skill at this particular rank is the Regent himself. So as you've probably noticed by now, there are quite a few different versions of evade skills in this game. This one, in particular, grants the user a bonus to their crit strength. In Okita's case, her crit damage gets increased from 20 to 40% depending on level, which is FUCKING GOOD! What's not good, though, are her passive skills, which I so totally didn't forget to talk about in Bushy Tails' video. <laughs> Okta's passives are Magic Resistance E and Writing E. Magic Resistance is just like your heart drops from Demon Bitch, a downright lie! Writing E, on the other hand, actually makes sense on her, because unlike the writing skills of basically every other Artoria in the game so far, Okta has the quick cards to make use of it. But unfortunately, even then, it's near pointless on Okta 2, because it only increases her quick card performance by a pathetic 2%. I mean, I guess it's something, but... Holy shit, that's bad. So when you put all of her skills together, Micah, minus the sadistic bitch part, is meant to be used as a burst damage saber. Now, you may be wondering why I'm just not calling her a crit saber instead, just to make things simple. And I could, and there probably wouldn't be anything glaringly wrong with that, but in my opinion, Okita doesn't generate quite enough crit stars on her own to supply herself with the stars she needs to sustain her big girl crit damage often and frequently. Sure, Pink Artoria can generate a lot of crit stars on her own with her two quick cards, but she's no jack. Really, she can only generate enough crit stars to power herself up and herself only. Either that or maybe only one other person. Maybe two if you're lucky one turn. 
she really can't generate enough to sustain the whole team. And so because of this, Okta's skills and her big damage hinge on whether or not you can secure those crit stars for her alone, or if you even want to in the first place. This is why I prefer to call her more of a burst saber than a crit saber, though there's also a very good chance that I'm just being horribly anal about this just like I am with weeaboo Japanese name pronunciations. Tuberculosis Girl's noble phantasm is called Mumio Sandanski, or Lightless Three Stage Thrust in English. Its damage scaling goes from 1200% at level 1 all the way up to 2000% at level 5. This is the highest base damage scaling that the game has to offer in terms of noble phantasm damage. There are other servants with single target MPs that do have higher scaling, but only if you complete their interludes that buff their noble phantasms. Three stage thrust also ignores defense, so if you're having trouble with some pesky boss who keeps spamming defense boosts, go tell Okta to poke him three times or something. Okta's NP also reduces the target's defense for three turns from 30 to 50% depending on overcharge level if you don't happen to kill them outright. But keep in mind that this is considered a debuff, and that enemy debuff resistances do apply. So if you're wondering why Okta's defense debuff after her NP doesn't proc sometimes, well, that's why. If you're in a position to whale, and you either consider Okta waifu, or you want to make the most out of your Okta in terms of damage, I highly, highly, HIGHLY recommend that you try to at least NP2 her. The 1200% damage scaling at MP1 is great and all, but considering the fact that the jump in damage is a whole 400 freaking percent going from MP1 to MP2, if you don't mind shelling out the extra quartz, I tell you to try to MP2 her. For the rest of you who aren't carefree whales and happen to pull Okta for free, this won't really matter, but if you do happen to have some extra salt, I mean quartz to throw at the gacha since at the time of this video going up, the Guda Guda gacha should still be active, it's not a bad idea to try gunning for an MP2 Okta because if you get her, the extra damage that she gets on her MP as a result is really worth it. And lastly, her MP is single target. This makes her the only gold saber in NAFGO at the time of her release who has a single target NP. Every other gold saber in the game either has an AoE NP or a status effect NP. In fact, only Favor, who's a 3 star, possessed a single target NP before Okta's debut. So now that she's out, Okta is gonna make your Lancer daily farming a hell of a lot easier. Great practical joke, Jim. Got me go to the annex. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 So right off the bat, there are two ways in which you can use your very own pink George Foreman. The first way is to use her like an offensive saber, and the second is a crit star generator. The offensive saber style is when Okita sets herself up with the crit stars that she herself generates. Because, as we've established earlier when talking about her skills, Okita can really only generate enough crit stars to support one person on the team, and in this case, it would be herself. And in order to achieve this, you'll need to set her up in a way that will help her deal as much damage as possible, or ensure that more often than not, she'll be pulling the crit stars that she or her teammates generate on the field. We'll talk more about this when we start talking about her craft essence choices. In this case, Okta benefits greatly from having all of her skills as highly leveled as possible. If you kind of haven't gotten the impression of this already, Okta's skills are very selfish and only benefit herself. She has absolutely no support role barring her ability to generate a chunk of crit stars if you get her two quick cards in a single hand. And because this offensive saber style relies on Okta to do a lot of the damage, naturally, the more leveled her skills are, the better she'll be able to do her job as main DPS, if that turn can even be used in a turn-based mobile game. The crit star generator route for Pinky is the alternative way that you could set her up. Rather than having her be the one producing and collecting the crit stars for herself, she can solely generate stars for her teammates instead. This means that you need to focus on not only how to make Okta consistently generate crit stars, but also what kind of team compositions that Okta will have the best synergy in. You don't want to put Okta in teams where everyone else around her has much less star pro weight than she does, like casters or berserkers. We already know that Okta isn't Jack, who can give your entire team 50 or more stars and with a single quick brave chain. So ultimately, if you do this, this just kind of defeats the purpose of her generating stars for her teammates if no one else can pick them up but her. 
The exception to this is if you have berserkers or anyone else who have skills that attract stars to themselves, like say, Tin Can Man's Eternal Arms Mastery. And speaking of team compositions... As with how I decided to divide uh, Okta's general game plan into two styles, I'll be doing the same here, roughly, with Okta's potential team compositions. If you want Okta to be an offensive saber, try to give her teammates who can support her and have her do as much damage as possible, naturally. Leaving aside obvious choices like Spineless Whiny Bitch, I think that Nyanta is perhaps one of the best teammates Okita can get. Both of them are quick-based servants, and so they can quick-chain together quite frequently. In addition, Atalantia's first skill, Beyond Arcadia, or Crossing Arcadia, whatever it is, buffs everyone's quick card performances, and for what should be obvious reasons, Okita really appreciates that. And she can also consistently produce a chunk of crit stars with her own quick cards too, which is nice for Okta because this means that the burden of producing stars is then shared with someone else, and it also means that your team's overall crit star generation abilities are more consistent. The only problem that Nyanta poses to Led Daishori Feet Grill is the fact that she can potentially steal stars away from Okta more often than not, since Nyanta's an archer and archers have bigger star weights than sabers do. And because she shows right around the corner at the time of this video going up, Scott Hawk is also a fantastic pairing for Okta, in my opinion, since Shisho's second skill, Primeval Rune, is much like Fluffy Tail's Fox's Wedding in that it's a targetable mana burst for quick cards. She's also got two quick cards of her own and a quick NP, so just like Nyanta, Thigh Girl can quick chain more easily with Okta. Now, if you're really in the mood to get your quick-based meme team fix, you could actually put Daishori, Nyanta, and Shisho together in the same team to create the triumvirate of lewd fetishes. I mean, quick memes. And conveniently enough, you have a Saber, an Archer, and a Lancer when you make this team, so it's actually very well-rounded if you're going up against any enemies of the Knight classes, since that means you'll always have at least two people who can deal with any particular enemy that you come across. And if you were to pool their skills together, Okta's bonuses from the quick skills of her team alone, including her own, can potentially amount to a staggering 150% additional bonus. But in case you're not a whale, Faber is great with Okta because all of his skills help her in some way, even his third skill, which I don't think is available in NAFGO at the moment, if I recall correctly. Teach can also be kind of a good teammate for Okta too, since two of his skills are always useful for female teammates. Same applies for Ushi, since Tengu's strategy can help Okta increase her limited MP charge gain, and Charisma is always a welcome skill. Hans is especially good with Okta since he can buff her crit damage with Human Observation, provide her with a few extra crit stars with the Innocent Monster, and provide additional support with his MP. But since Hans is one of the best free-to-play servants, you were probably going to use him with Okta anyway. Any assassins who can reliably generate crit stars for Okta is good, since it means that, as I mentioned before when we were talking about Nyanta, the burden of creating crit stars isn't entirely on Okta herself. So Jinkei and Cursed Arm Hassan could be Okta's crit star suppliers. As for team compositions for when Okta is the crit star generator, since we know that Okta can only support one other teammate with the number of stars that she produces, bring along someone who can make use of those stars consistently, and someone else who can further buff your crit server with crit up or damage up skills. Nobu, ironically enough, is perfect actually as Okta's partner in crime, as if they weren't already. Since Nobu is an archer and has a skill that not only increases her star pull, but also increases her crit damage as well. Okta is quick based, so naturally Imaginary Round, Gander, and Verdant Black Keys are the go-tos for Okta. Also consider Launch Order, which is called After Party Order here in NA because... reasons. It increases both Quick and Buster card performances by 10% or 15% when limit broken, so it's almost tailored just for her because she only has one Arts card. Because Okta is a heavy critter though, you have a whole plethora of CEs that you can choose from to put on her. If you want to increase her crit damage, consider CEs that do just that, like Rin's Pendant and Untumbra. Since the CE will be coming out soon with Shishul's Banner, Knight's Pride is also an option if you don't mind making Okta an even bigger glass cannon than she kind of already is. Also consider Lewd Bazette if you find yourself putting Okta in teams where she's frequently got archers and riders as her teammates so that you can help ensure that Okta is consistently getting those crit stars and not her teammates. Moonlight Festival and Gudao are also great choices on her because their effects are always relevant to her. Moonlight Festival increases her crit star gen and crit damage, and Gudao increases her crit damage and NP damage instead. 
Speaking of MP damage, because Okta's NP is single target, giving her CEs like Gudao that boost her NP damage is very good on her, if you're a fan of watching Feet Girl blow bitches up with her NP. So stuff like Heaven's Feel and Halloween Princess are great if that's what you want. I would advise against Black Rail, generally speaking, because Okta, like I just mentioned, is kind of a glass cannon, so unless you know that you can keep Okta alive long enough for her to get her NP off, I'd recommend that you stick with safer options here instead. And lastly, Okta's Bond CE is pretty good on her too, since it's like Kamamo's fan club, except the quick version of it. And remember that quick meme team that I mentioned before with Nyanta and Best Thighs Girl? Now, imagine if you had all their bond CEs too. Hmm. So in summary, Okta is a burst damage saver, or a crit saver, as most of you would just say instead. She has two ways in which she can be played, either as main DPS or as a crit star engine for one of the person on her team. And if you find yourself in situations where you're going up against bosses who always like to apply defense buffs on themselves for whatever reason, well, Okita doesn't particularly care since her NP lets her ignore them all, and she puts an extra defense debuff on them afterwards just as an extra little fuck you. But because she offers no support skills other than her ability to generate crit stars, you need to make sure that your pressure Sakura Saber is supported in ways that her skills don't really cover, like healing and overall damage, be it through your Mystic Codes or with her teammates. Make sure that she doesn't fight too much with Nobu over who the best Guda Guda girl is, and that's all you really need to know about your local Japanese Artoria. And no, she doesn't fire a beam out of her katana. Beam ga ute nai saber wa saber ja nai set desu. Thank you all for watching this video, and hopefully you've learned something informative or at least was entertained by it. And assuming that this video goes up on the night of the 20th here in America, there will only be about two days, if that, until she shall rain salt down upon us and makes the rest of FGO Alter quit the game too. Which means that there won't really be any point in me making another Twitter poll asking who you want me to cover in my next 5 star servant video, because y'all are just gonna fucking pick Skahawk anyway. And so in the meantime, since I'll be waiting to get my own Shisho to get gameplay footage with, enjoy Thanksgiving for you fellow Americans of mine, and try not to overdose on turkey and salt. Watch the Servant Spotlight videos of Shisho that everyone else will put up faster than mine, and I'll see you guys on the other side of the Saltpocalypse. Deuces! Let's keep this going all night.